If you're planning to work with Excel VBA or work with macros, you need the Visual Basic Editor. To be able to use the editor, you need to know your way around. This video is part of my online Excel VBA course. If you're interested to find out more, check out the link in the description below. You'll also find out more about the course at the end of this video. When you record a macro and you select save it in this workbook, it's basically stored within the workbook you have open in a place called the Visual Basic Editor, or VBE for short. Let's take a quick look at VBE. You can get there with different ways. Let me show you my favorite method, and that's the shortcut key Alt F11. That opens the VBE. Another way is to go to View, Macros, View Macros, and you can edit the macro. So in this case, we just have one, so it's already activated, and we click Edit, we come here. Another way to get there is to go to the Developer tab and go to Macros, again, Edit Macro, or you can go to Developer tab and directly click on Visual Basic, and it opens this tab. Let me just change the slide view, and there I'm going to give you an overview of the most important parts of this VBE, and then we'll switch back to VBE and take a more detailed look at them. These were the different ways that you can get there. That's about how it looks. Now you might not see these, so when I went in now, I also didn't see these. I'm going to show you how you can activate them and what they're good for. Important one is switching back to Excel. You can do it from here. You can also click Alt F11 to go back. Right here, that's your project view. And here you can see all of your open workbooks and worksheets that are within this workbook. Okay, so in this example here, you see that's the personal one. That's the personal macro workbook that's basically available to all your workbooks. Now, if you are using macros that are saved in here, you're always going to see this in your Visual Basic Editor because Excel has opened this workbook, it's just hidden it from view. But this way, Excel makes any macro saved in here available to all your workbooks. Now, here I just have a default workbook open. There is these objects here, and we're going to see later on what they are. But basically, you can see all the sheets that you have in your workbook listed here. If you record any macros, they're always saved under modules. So if you open the modules, you can see by default Excel creates module one, module two, and so on, and macros are saved in there. Now, when you write code later on, generally you will also write your code inside modules. It's an easier way to basically write code that is available to the entire workbook. You can also write code directly on these objects as well, and I'm going to show them to you in a second when we switch back to Excel. Next is the insert menu bar here. That's quite useful because from here you can insert procedures, modules, user forms, and so on. But you can also right mouse click and insert a module as well. Any code that you write is written here or any macro recorder code is here. So that's our code window. Down here, we have the ability to switch views. So basically, every time Excel writes code or you create your own Visual Basic codes, you put them inside statements that are called sub for sub procedure and end sub. Okay, so you start a procedure, you end a procedure. Instructions are inside this. And you can type many subs underneath one another inside one module. But sometimes you want to just focus on one. So by clicking this, you basically switch to only view the single code and not see the other ones that are listed below. These options here, they are great for editing your code. And by default, they're not activated. You can activate it from View Toolbars Edit. Now I'm going to do that for myself in a second so you can follow along with me. Down here, you can see the Properties window. And again, you can activate this from the View menu bar here. Now these properties are the properties of anything that you click here. They have different properties depending on what you click. So for example, for the module that is clicked here, you just see there is really nothing to it. You can just change the description of the module. But if you click on the sheet, you get different properties here. 
Now you use this a lot for user forms, which we're gonna see later on in the course. The immediate window here is great for testing your code and for debugging. I do use it quite a lot and I'm gonna be using it throughout the course and we can activate this through the view tab as well under view immediate window. Now important is these ones, so you can run and stop your code here while we're testing it. So you don't always have to go back to Excel to run your code, you just directly run it from here. Now let's switch to Excel. Let's take a more detailed look at this. I'm gonna bring up the Visual Basic Editor with Alt F11. We can see our macro that was saved right here. And it's saved inside a module. If I double click this, I can shift views. To see which view you're in, just take a look at which one is a bit gray. And that's the active view. So I can click on these. And you can see that right here, I can also write code. But generally, code that applies to your workbook is written inside modules. And code that's specific to a sheet is kept on its own sheet. Generally, this is used for special worksheet events, which we're gonna see later on, so I can just show you. We have a list available here. For example, a macro should run if you select a cell, or a macro should run if you change contents of a cell, okay? Or if you calculate, or before you right click, and so on. This workbook has a similar thing. So if I select this workbook, you get a list of events that apply. For example, the default is workbook open. If the workbook opens and you want a certain macro to run, you would write it here. You can still write other macros or type other code on this workbook as well, but again, it's better to restrict it to the events that are available here and write your code inside modules. Our macro recorder inserted this module. We can also manually insert it. We said we go to insert and insert module. You can create a new one. You can also right mouse click and insert a module as well. And now we have a third one. When I double click, I open that module. Here you can write different sub procedures. I could write another sub, delete sheet, and then type in code here. Now this was the different views I mentioned, so if I only want to concentrate on this view, I can click on this, and it only shows me the sub-procedure that I'm working on, or I can switch back in this way and see all the other sub-procedures that are in this module. Now when you write your own VBA code, you're responsible for creating your own modules, and each module can have many different codes or macros in them. Now, does it matter how many modules you have? What I prefer to do is to not have so many different modules. I don't put one sub in one module. I do have different subs in a module, but I try to restrict it so that they don't get super long. I prefer to work with less modules and more subs inside the modules. Okay, but it's really up to you and how you prefer to organize your stuff. Let's activate some things that we're going to need throughout our course. We're going to want to have the properties window here. You can activate it by going to view, properties window. The name of the module is here. We can change the name by changing it from here. I can call that format sheet. Okay, now if I click on a sheet here, I can see different properties that are associated with this sheet. If I change the name of this sheet here, so that was sheet two, let's just call it Layla, it will change on the Visual Basic side as well. You can see Layla in here. We'll be practicing more with this later on, especially when we work with user forms. Now, the other thing that I said is good to have is the immediate window. So let's go view and insert the immediate window here. This is great for testing your code, and I'm gonna show you an example later on. The other important thing is to activate the editing options here. Let's go to View, Toolbars, and activate the editing options. I'll take you through these in a second, but first let's take a quick look at some VB basics and color guidelines. I showed you an example of a sub-procedure. There's also something called function procedures. Function procedures are your way of writing and creating your own formulas. 
you can also use them to return values to subprocedures. But mainly what you're going to be working with is the subprocedures. You might have already noticed some color differences in the Visual Basic Editor. Blue color is assigned to keywords to help you read your code better. What VBA also does, which is really helpful, is to capitalize code references. You don't have to write it capitalized, you can just type it in, and when it's correct and VBA recognizes this, it capitalizes it for you. So it's kind of like confirmation that you wrote the right thing. If your code becomes red, it means there's something wrong with it, so you need to correct that, and comments are shown as green but they need to have that single quotation mark. So that's basically the trigger for VBA to know that that's a comment. A white space is free to use, and it's great for helping you to organize your code. Let's quickly switch to our first macro that we recorded, and let's see if we recognize some of the colors here. We can see the blue right here. We can see the green for the comments. You can also add comments at the end of a code, and this is something I do if I'm creating loops and I want to identify which loop I'm closing, I would put a single quotation mark here and say this is due to this. Okay, and when I click down, you can see that it becomes green. So it doesn't have to be on its own line. Sometimes your VBA codes can get too long and you want to switch to the next line. If you just click enter, you're going to get that red thing that says there's something wrong with the code. So what you need to do is to press space and then the underscore and then press enter. This basically tells VBA this line and this line belong together. It's the same thing as writing this. You may want to do that for codes that really are long, that go <laughs> across the screen. You just want to bring it down for better readability. Now, if you try to do what I just did, if you go to your line of code and you press like enter like this, you probably get a pop-up, which I didn't get. Okay, so that takes us to our tools options. Let's just go and check what we have here. The first one, auto syntax check, is probably something you have on if you haven't used the VBE editor before, right? So by default, it's generally on. It can be helpful, so it was helpful for me at the beginning, but I turned it off because it became quite annoying. So for example, let's say right here, if I press enter, it says an expression is missing here, right? I forgot to type something. If I press enter here, it said it expects some line number or label or so on, right? So it can be helpful if you are new to VBA, but after a while, the moment you find that it's getting more annoying than helpful, come here to Tools, to Options, and turn it off. The second thing that I have on that you might not have is this Require Variable Declaration. And I have a lecture on this later on when we cover variables, explaining why you should turn it on. Just so you have an idea, what it does is that it puts this option explicit on top of every single module that you create. It helps you become more efficient when you're creating your own VBA code. So if you're just planning to use the macro recorder and you're not planning to modify that code, you don't need this on. But if you're planning to actually write your own procedures, then you should turn it on. And I explain it to you later why you need it. So if you want, you can already add it yourself right now, or you can wait until we get to that lecture, and then once you're convinced, you can add it in yourself. And of course, you can type it in as well. So it's not something that only this option adds. It's just that every time you create something new, it will already put it on top for you. The other important thing under options is this auto list members, and that's the intelligence of the Visual Basic Editor. So make sure this is on. This basically helps us to use the right name references when we're typing the code. Let's say I want the message box. So if I type in MS, then it pops up here. Now I can press the tab key to accept this. You can also get here through this editing options that we added before. This was under View, Toolbars, and Edit. 
Okay, that added this. And you can see this list properties, you can see the shortcut keys that are associated with them as well here. But generally turning on that option automatically activates this for you. One useful shortcut here is the control space. So let's say I'm just typing in message box directly and I'm not sure if it's the E or the S here, I can do control space and it tries to complete the word by giving me the options that I have here. So if I scroll down, I can see, okay, it's MSG box and then just double click on this to take it or press tab to take this. Control space can be quite useful here. Now, the other thing is when you're testing your code, you might want to disable parts of the code. To do that, you can highlight what you want disabled, click on this block. It becomes a comment, it doesn't run. And then you can easily later just uncomment it by clicking on this icon here. It's always good to add comments throughout your projects. In the mini projects that you do, it's fine if you don't add too many comments, but in the bigger projects, it's always good to have comments so that your life becomes easier when you go back to the code like a year later and you try to update it. Notice also how the macro recorder aligns the code. Inside the sub, it puts like a tab space here. It does this so your code is easier to read. And I try to keep this when I'm typing in the code myself as well. You can do that and by pressing tab, you can highlight blocks of code and press the tab key. To bring it back, you can do shift tab and it brings it back. And you can also use these buttons here. So the indent and the outdent buttons. Notice the select statement in the macro. We see it here, we see it here, and we see it here. This is something that always gets recorded when you use the macro recorder. The select statement is not necessary. You can easily remove it. What you end up with is sentences that are better to read. The thing with VBA is that you don't have to select objects to manipulate them. You can just refer to the object names and manipulate them indirectly. The other thing worth mentioning is the equal sign. You've seen this in mathematical operations as a sign of equality, right? So it checks if one side is equal to the other side. Now in VBA, it can be used for that as well, but its main purpose is to assign the right side to the left side. So sometimes this assignment can cause confusion, but it's gonna make more sense in the next lecture or in the next basically section when we look at different methods that we can refer to ranges. Also notice how Excel refers to ranges. You can see this active cell used here. That's just a cell that's currently active, that's basically clicked on. And see how Excel refers to specific ranges here and here. It uses the referencing that we're used to when we write formulas. This is how the macro recorder prefers to refer to them. Now there are other ways and we're gonna take a look at them in later lectures where we're gonna look at completely different ways of referring to cells and ranges. Knowing the different ways that you can do this is gonna help you write very flexible and dynamic VBA code, which is actually mostly what we need when we create automated tools. Let's address some common questions. Do you need to know all of this stuff by heart? No. Do you need to understand what this dot is that comes after each of these statements? Yes. Especially if you want to modify a recorded macro or you want to modify something that you copied from the internet, you need to understand this concept. That's something we're going to cover in the next lecture inside the course. In case you're interested to find out more, check out the description below the video. Now, if you like the sample tutorial, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested to learn more about VBA or Excel in general, consider subscribing.